everybody back up there because we've got good folks that are that are not there right now and we're working to get them back up to the one to five thank you yes sir good morning general uh, two quick questions for you you address the issue of uh, cyber and um, the reserve role in that can you maybe address a few um, particular questions? Do you, has there been an approach to any of the major industries with the Reserve Command with major industries regarding the possibility of setting up a structured program to bring reservists in there for training purposes as well as job opportunities to create an ongoing uh, development and uh, a body of, le of uh, expertise within the reserve world to really you know, deal with the future? That's the first question. Okay. The second question is regarding partnerships and jointness. Um, what is the possibility or is there, an, is, there not, is there a program or thoughts to lead to the future of with the ARC uh, approaching the reserve as well as the Navy, the Coast Guard and the Army, their reserve and ARC uh, um, structures as far as how we can learn from each other and maybe uh, use our size as an opportunity to um, create efficiencies and modernization across different uh, our products, what we use as our resources, like in technology, sharing um, similar capabilities. And oh, that's such. a good point. Okay. I can answer the first sec uh, question fairly easily because we just did it on Friday. Uh, I had a meeting with Brigadier General Don Ralph, who's the mobilization assistant to uh, General Kevin Chilton, Commander of the United States Strategic Command, whom I had the pleasure of working with before, uh, both at 8th and at STRATCOM. And that is exactly what we were talking about was, and it turns out, we have a great number of reservists right now that are working for Cisco and, and, and a, a large number of these companies. They're the ones that are actually coming to us, in this case, and saying, this is where the good ideas are coming from. So to tell you the truth, this is just in the, in the, in the, in the dialogue phase right now. We are investigating just exactly what you're talking about. I mean, we're, we're, we're going out, we're talking, we're, we've, we, we think we're getting to the right people. We're looking at our databases to try to scrub and look and see, you know, that, uh, that civilian employment uh, 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 thing we have to update each year. We go online and, you know, go to uh, the portal and we have to tell them what our civilian employer is. Well, we're going to take a look and see whether it's appropriate, whether we can use that and look at our people and find out okay, which people are, are employed by these folks? Can we go out and contact them? Ask them for their ideas. How do, we, how do you see us leveraging? Well, it turns out we've got, a, we've got a vice president of Cisco that's a colonel in the Air Force Reserve, I think, what I just found out on Friday. So General Ralph at General, and this is, this is a little bit, uh, maybe it's not different, but you know our, our requirements and our organizational constructs and so forth, in the past we had pretty much worked between uh, they originated between the regular component and the, and the reserve component. Well, this requirement is coming down from the commander of STRATCOM. This is a COCOM requirement. He is telling us Air Force and by extension and including Air Force Reserve because I, General Chilton actually believes what I was uh, describing earlier that he, we do need to leverage our civilian expertise or civilian employers and, and their training and so forth in order to bring a mature cyber capability to bear now. And General Chilton will tell you, we are we're approaching being late to need. We, this is the reason that this is high on his list is because we need to get this we need to get this done now. So to the first question, uh, we're working it. To your second question, other than, you know there's uh, we have a monthly meeting, breakfast meeting, with all the reserve component chiefs and deputies uh, here in Washington. And basically, the host, we rotate the host and, and so forth, and one of the, the things that we do is, is that the host then provides a topic for discussion. And it is always a topic for discussion uh, that has applicability across all of the components. Last week or two weeks ago, uh, the two uh, advisors to the chairman uh, new Brigadier General Lucky from Army Reserve and uh, Mike, uh, the Chairman's advisor to the Guard. I, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. But they, uh, the, the two advisors to the Chairman hosted it down in the Chairman's dining room. And the subject was how do we grow reserve officers and reserve to reserve generals into the joint community? How do we get them the, the tickets and the experience? As, as action officers, as majors and lieutenant colonels, so that they become 
we don't, it's not that we're given a slot and they're obligated to take it, but that we actually have regular component commanders coming after reserve component officers because of the strength of their record. That we get to a point where we grow reserve officers with joint experience and expertise and capability that is on a par and, and allows us to compete with our regular component brethren on an equal basis. That is where we want to be. That is one of General Stenner's highest priorities within Air Force Reserve. Not just for his general officers, but for all of his officers. All of his people. To get that joint experience. So that is an example. Okay, and the last month was a combination of family programs, Yellow Ribbon, uh, the Coast Guard hosted that. So what, it's a venue Maybe it's not really an organized uh, structure, but it's a venue that we're able to leverage the size and the intellectual capital across all of the reserve components on issues that apply to each of us. So maybe not as formal as what you might think, but it, it, it's, it's actually fairly effective. So good questions. Thank you. Anything else? Well, General McCarthy. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. If I may, sir, uh, General Thompson, it, it, it sounds a bit pedestrian, but uh, would you comment on what the implications are, particularly for the reserve components of the uh, new paradigm <coughs> air base ground defense, particularly in light of what apparently happened at Bagram over the weekend, you know, the Air Force role and then obviously the Air Force reserve role in the uh, defense of air bases, basically, well, beyond the wire. Beyond the wire. Yes, sir. Well, I can tell you, I just I think I can answer that in, it's no longer in lieu of, it's joint expeditionary tasking. We do nothing in lieu of. We are outside of the wire every day. Our people are counter IED guys, our, you know, our uh, EOD folks. We have, I'll tell you, there's a guy that can tell you, Chief Master Sergeant Bill Gobin just came back, was a group superintendent, and he can tell you uh, exactly where our, our people are and what they're doing. I think probably you know that, but they're there because they need to be there, because the total force needs them there. And the paradigm has exactly changed, it has. There's not a requirement when the, when the joint commander the Joint Force Commander comes with a request for capability or a request for forces or whatever to the Joint Staff, and, and if the Air Force can help, the Air Force will. And that includes your, there's, not a, there's nothing I don't think out there that an Air Force Reservist is not doing. So we, by extension, you know, you've heard the Chief say this many times, I think, that we are all in, and there's not that includes Air Force Reserve Command and Air Force Reserve. So uh, it is a paradigm. Uh, I would say it's more than semantical. I would say that it is a it is a overt, uh, obvious, very very visual and very visceral commitment to the Joint Force. And we, the Air Force Reserve, are hand in glove with that. No, nowhere between us and the Air Force and the and the Joint Force at all on that one. Thanks, sir. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you very, very much. I thank General McCarthy for the invitation, and I, again, I apologize that General Stenner could not be here with you, but I know he would tell you thank you for all you do. Thank you for all your support. Uh, please continue that support. Please tell us where we can help you help us, and, uh, and we will uh, maintain that dialogue. So thank you very, very much.